This little module covers some of the basics from Algebra 1 that we're going to need for geometry, and those would include distance, slope, and midpoint. First, let's look at uh, the slope relationship. I think it would be fairly safe to say that what you would remember about slope is that it is the rise calculation over the run calculation. Now, in some circles, when people talk about that, they talk about the change in y over the change in x. This little triangle means delta, and delta in many uh, relationships means change in rise, change in run. And change, of course, uh, when we're talking about that, would be you know this value here, and the run would be the distance between these two points. So if it is the change in y, you are going to have a point down here, and I'll just call it x1 and y1. Where do the ones come from? That's just from point 1. And I'll call this one over here x2 and y2. That's just point number 2. Now this guy right here, we can actually find it. It would have the same x value like x is over here, it'd have the same x value as this guy. So its value would be x2. And its y value would be the same, the height would be the same as this guy's height. So it would be uh, a y1 here. Now why did I do that? Well, if I want to find the change here in this, uh, the rise, it would simply be the change from y2 to y1. That's an easy thing, y2 minus y1. That's the rise every time. And then on the bottom, uh, if we're looking carefully at it, it would be the distance between um, these two points here, which would be x2 minus x1. And so uh, our formula looks like this. Now, students will often worry, who's x1 and who's, who's uh, y1 and so on? Who's the x2? Who's point 0.1? Who's point 0.2? It honestly does not matter. But whoever you name to be point 0.1 has to be that for x and y, and same with the y values. So here are two points for us. Just for the sake of it, I'll call this point 0.1, and this will be point 0.2. So if I'm doing this calculation, again, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, I would use 3, that's the y value of the second point, minus 5. And in the other case, it would be 8 minus 3. This gives me negative 2 over 5. Now maybe just to show you what would happen if uh, I went up there and I changed those. So let's make this point number 2 and this one point number one. So the y change would be five minus three, and the x change would be three minus eight. This gives me two over negative five. Now actually, those are identical answers, aren't they? So my point to you is it does not matter who's point one and point two. Let's do this problem. I'll call this one a one and a two in terms of point counts. So the y values would be look like this, three minus a negative one, and negative one subtract a negative five. Good use of brackets here or parentheses to keep things organized. Uh, that becomes a positive one, and so this becomes a positive five. So I get four over four, or in other words, a slope of one. Last thing about slope is just the basic um, correlations to slope. Um, when we, when a line rises to the right, it's becoming positive up in here. This is a positive slope. When the line falls to the right, this is a negative slope. Um, and then if we look at these ones, they're kind of unique here. I think it makes sense that this is a zero slope, right? Zero, that makes sense. And this one here is known as an undefined slope, if you remember, undefined. And that's because its run is zero and dividing by zero makes it undefined. The midpoint formula is designed to help us to find exactly 
the middle. If we had a, a line segment like this, we want to find the middle. In geometry learned, that's the, the midpoint, or in algebra we learned that. Now, how do we do that? Uh, how do we find that exact middle? Think of it like this. If you had this point and this point, you had an A and a B, think of it like finding the average. What's the average of them? Finding the average of two test grades means what's you know in the middle. And so it's exactly the same way here. The formula then basically says, take your two x values from your two points, the two x values, and divide them by two. Add them together and divide by two. That's an average, isn't it? And you do the same thing for the y values. Add them together and divide by two. That'll give you the x midpoint value and y the midpoint value. And we're just finding the average of them. So in this case, this would be 3 plus 8 divided by 2. 5 plus 3 divided by 2. This is 11 halves, 8 halves. And as a decimal, this is 5.5 and 4. Over here, we would do negative 5 added to negative 1, divide by 2. Negative 1 and 3, divide by 2. That would be negative 6 divided by 2. This would be 2 divided by 2. And our final answer would be this. Midpoint's quite simple. The final formula, and usually the hardest of the group for many to remember and use, is called the distance formula. I'm going to try and make the distance formula a little easier on us, maybe. We'll see. But I want us to remind ourselves about the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem says, in this case, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Right? The squares of each of those sides, um, if we were to square them out, uh, the, the, the two legs squared and summed will equal the hypotenuse. Now, the distance formula is actually asking us to kind of do the same thing. It wants to know how, how big, think of it as finding C, basically. And you've seen the distance formula before. It's got all the x, 2s, and the 1s, and the squared, and the square root, and all those things. I'm going to try and show you that really that formula is, is all right here in our friend the Pythagorean theorem. Let me show you how the Pythagorean theorem is the same as the distance formula. All right, let's, uh, let's bring this guy here and let's work a little bit on it. So I'm going to start with the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now let's pretend this is our a squared here, which is our run, isn't it? It would be, if we wanted to find it, it would be the difference in the x values. That would be our run or our a squared from here to here. Well, likewise, if I wanted to find um, the, the uh, rise, it would be the change in the y values squared. And again, just to highlight that, that would be this guy right here. And the way we would find it would be just the difference in the y values. And as you know, the Pythagorean theorem basically says that that thing, right, that thing equals rc squared. Now, can you kind of see uh, the distance formula a little bit? The problem that we have is that um, it's equal to uh, c squared here. So what happens if we took the square root of both sides? What we would get is something that would look like this. x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared equals our distance, right? Equals that c. This is the distance formula. And uh, honestly, what I'm about to tell you is I don't, ever, I don't ever use this thing. What do I use? I use this thing. Let me show you what I mean by that. So maybe instead of memorizing this crazy thing, how about learning this guy here? All right, here we go. I'm going to show you how I do this using my friend the Pythagorean theorem. 
So think of this as the run value. So I just say, how far is it from eight to three or three to eight? And it doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative because distance is just, it's, it's a straight value. So five is how far that is. And then I say, how far is it from a five to a three or a three to a five? And that answer is two. And then <laughs> this is all I do, 25 and four, C squared is the square root of 29. And we can turn that into a decimal, but that's the answer for the distance. Now you could have plugged that into the gigantic formula and worked it all out, but ultimately I'm just doing it in my head. And the key is, is to say, how far am I in the X values? That's five. How far am I in the Y values is two. And then you just work the math. Let's do it one more time. So the Pythagorean theorem comes out. And I say to myself, how far is it from four to uh, one? And that answer is just simply three. And then I say, how far is it from negative two to negative three? That of course is just one. Uh, and so one squared equals C squared. Uh, this becomes 9 and 1 equals c squared, and then we get the square root of 10 as our answer. Stay away from that big, ugly distance formula. Use the Pythagorean theorem. You will love it.